let's go back to the phone lines, talk to Anthony in Topeka, Kansas. Hi, Anthony. Well, hi, Hank. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, great. Anyway, my question is this. Um, I uh, kind of have, a, have an online debate with a guy um, that says that pastors should only be paid if they travel about. Um, if they are planted in a community, they should not be paid, because he grew up in a church where the pastors were not paid. And uh, that didn't sound right to me, so I pointed out scriptures to him like, um, or oh, work was worthy of his hire, and I believe in First Corinthians 9 it says, people who preach the gospel should earn their living from the gospel, and um, don't muzzle the ox who trace the grain, stuff like that, but um, he... But he just kind of holds his ground and says, well, pastors who travel should be paid or evangelists, but those that, are, that stay put, planted in the community, you know what I mean, should not be paid. And, um, well, who's right? You are. I mean, and, and, and what I love about what you did is you didn't let your own opinion hold sway. You went to the Word of God. So just in a, a short prologue to your question, you mentioned First Corinthians chapter 9. Fantastic. Uh, Galatians chapter 6, let him who is taught the word share all good things with him who teaches. Or you also alluded uh, to the last part of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, uh, verse 18, but you can proceed that as well, and I'm sure you have, where it uh, is uh, said by the Apostle Paul that the elders who direct affairs of the church uh, and do so in a, uh, a very good manner, are worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. For the Scripture says, Do not muzzle the ox while it is treading out the grain, and the worker deserves his wages. So you think about uh, those who have wisdom and insight from the Holy Spirit and have been gifted to teach and preach. Wow. I really value that, um, how much I have learned from pastors who have had the wisdom of working in very difficult situations over many years. They have been broken in the cauldron of adversity, and now they are wise and certainly worthy of being honored and, 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 and cared for from a financial standpoint. And I, I think of how the Lord does that as well. Uh, think of my dad. My dad was a, um, a Christian Reformed pastor for many, many years. He died of a fibrosing of the lungs in 1997. But my dad would cry with people. He would marry them. He would bury them. He would give them counsel. And he literally wrung himself out for the Lord. And uh, what was interesting in his particular situation, didn't have a very big church, a uh, fairly meager salary. But I'm always amazed at what the Lord did. My, my mother's now 91. This year she'll be 92. And even from the meager salary that my dad was making, he was able to save. The Dutch word is zeinig. He was uh, very thrifty, and he was able to save. And, and in that process... Uh, my mother is still being cared for today. I mean, obviously, her kids love her. They rise up and call her blessed, and we're all involved in doing whatever we can uh, for mom. But, but nonetheless, my, my dad saw to it. He believed that she would live long after he had died. And, uh, and he was right, and he saw to it that she would be cared for, uh, just as she is today. And uh, uh, so I, I, I see how... The scripture is true that a, a truly righteous man who lived in discipline before the Lord, the Lord would not let his widow suffer. Of course, he raised children that loved their, their mother so much that even had he um, uh, not had the resources he had instilled in us, that very discipline for, uh, for our mother. And, 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 and so a beautiful thing to see how the Lord provides in supernatural ways, maybe not in glitz and glamour or in a way that would be very obvious, but to us as, as, um, as uh, family members, we see it and we just marvel at God's grace and provision. 